Time passes very quickly. Soon, as a clinical ophthalmologist, you'll have to learn a good deal in a very short space of time. As a young training ophthalmologist, you'll be expected to know a huge amount about many different types of eye conditions. Clinical diagnostics and problem solving is a key part of clinical ophthalmology training. If you're a trainee and you want to improve your clinical skills and diagnostic capabilities, then you're going to love the master's course here at the University of Edinburgh. So come along with me and enjoy the ride. Just several weeks ago, as I was about to start clinic, I saw three patients in the waiting area. One patient, interestingly, had prominent creases in his earlobes. The lady sitting next to him clearly had an itchy tattoo. She was scratching her arm quite vigorously. And the third gentleman was using a magnifying glass with which to read a magazine. One of Edinburgh's most famous master diagnosticians was Joseph Bell. He inspired the fictional character of Sherlock Holmes created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And here we are in the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh, standing next to this beautiful oil painting depicting an 1888 meeting of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh Committee. The president at that time was Joseph Bell. He was the teacher and mentor of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And in fact, it was Bell who inspired the character of Sherlock Holmes. Vice president at that time was Argyll Robertson. You'll know Argyll Robertson because he described the pupils of neurosyphilis. He also made major contributions to our understanding of angle closure glaucoma and at that time introduced the product from the Calabar beam. And here we are outside 11 Lothian Street next to a plaque commemorating Charles Darwin. He studied medicine here in 1825. He went on to write one of the most influential books of all time, The Origin of Species, in which there's a chapter devoted to the eye which he describes as an organ of extreme perfection and complication. Another great hero who also studied the scientific method was David Hume. And here we are next to the statue of David Hume, a leading figure of Scottish Enlightenment. He described many things, including in his treatise on human nature, experimental method, the controlled experiment. He was a famous skeptic, but nevertheless recognized the importance of both science and human emotion in dealing with every aspect of our lives. One of my clinical research interests is retinal imaging. And the first person to present to the world the first colour photograph was James Clark Maxwell. James Clark Maxwell was a mathematical physicist. He described colour vision theory for the first time. And in his left hand, he holds the disc which he used to display this to the world. He also showed the world the first colour photograph imaging, colour photography, so important in terms of our clinical ophthalmology learning. Let's just return now to the three patients I discussed earlier. The first patient, with creases in his ears, is known as Frank Sign. He was at high risk of myocardial infarction and arteriopathy. He also had floppy eyelid syndrome and associated sleep apnea. The second patient, the lady with the itchy tattoo, turned out to have sarcoidosis and uveitis, explaining her presentation as a red eye. And our third patient, who used a magnifying glass in order to read, was a high hypermetrope. He experienced subacute attacks of angle closure glaucoma, and that was his reason for presenting with a red eye. So what is the trick behind becoming an expert diagnostician in clinical ophthalmology? Perhaps having some of the ingenuity of a Charles Darwin or a David Hume, some of the inventiveness of a James Clark Maxwell, and some of the detective skills of a Sherlock Holmes. Why not hone your own clinical skills and improve and enhance and fast track your own learning by joining us on the master's course? Indeed, why not become your own master of clinical ophthalmology?